Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. If x is greater than 0, then the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of x is equal to 1. Now we've already proven that this sequence converges to 1 using the exponential function. So then, how do we prove that this sequence converges to 1 without the exponential function? Well, we will be using Bernoulli's inequality in the proof, which is as follows. Suppose a is a real number greater than or equal to negative 1, and n is a positive integer. Then, 1 plus a to the power of n is greater than or equal to 1 plus na. Okay, so now let's get into proving this theorem. To start out the proof, we'll suppose x is greater than 0. From here, the whole goal is to prove that the limit of this sequence is equal to 1. And to prove that, we're going to split this up into three cases. Either x is between 0 and 1, x is equal to 1, or x is bigger than 1. Now, if x is equal to 1, then this is just a constant sequence of 1s. So clearly, it converges to 1. So this completes the case x equals 1. Now, let's consider the case x is bigger than 1. Now, to show that this sequence converges to 1, the idea is to show that the nth root of x is squeezed between two sequences, which also converge to 1. And to see how we can do that, well, let's first consider an arbitrary positive integer n. And we define the value a to be the nth root of x minus 1. Well, if we solve for x, then we're going to add 1 to the other side, then raise both sides to the power of n. And we get x equals 1 plus a to the power of n. And now we're going to apply Bernoulli's inequality, right? Certainly we can apply Bernoulli's inequality here because a is greater than or equal to negative 1. In fact, since x is greater than 1, the nth root of x is bigger than 1 as well. So a is positive. So clearly we can apply Bernoulli's inequality here. So applying Bernoulli's inequality, we have 1 plus a to the power of n is greater than or equal to 1 plus na. And then we'll substitute a for what it is. So we have this. So we have x is greater than or equal to this. Now if we solve for nth root of x, what we're going to do is we're going to subtract 1 to the other side, divide n to the other side, and then add 1 to the other side. And if we do that, we get this. And as we mentioned before, the nth root of x is bigger than 1. And so we have shown, given any positive integer n, this inequality is true. So this inequality is true for all positive integers n. And so we have shown that the nth root of x is squeezed between two sequences which converge to 1. Right? Clearly, a constant sequence of 1s converges to 1. But also this sequence converges to 1. Because we know that the sequence x minus 1 over n converges to 0. And adding 1 to that, we know that a constant sequence of 1s converges to 1. So by the addition property limits, this sequence must converge to 1. And now, by the squeeze theorem, because these two sequences converge to 1, and this inequality is true for all positive integers, well, that implies the sequence squeezed between them must also converge to 1. And so this completes the case that x is greater than 1. So now let's move on to our final case, which is that x is between 0 and 1. So what happens in this case? Well, the observation is as follows. Certainly, the nth root of x is equal to 1 over the nth root of 1 over x for all positive integers n. And since x is between 0 and 1, we have that 1 over x is bigger than 1. And so if we apply the same argument that we did above to 1 over x, we had that the sequence nth root of 1 over x converges to 1. Right? Because remember, x can be any real number bigger than 1. We have shown if x is any real number bigger than 1, then the nth root of x converges to 1. Well, since 1 over x is bigger than 1, 
it will follow that n to the 1 over x converges to 1. So what we have here is constant sequence of 1s converges to 1. The sequence in the denominator converges to 1. So by the division property limits, this sequence must converge to 1 over 1, which is equal to 1. And so we have that the limit of n third of x is equal to 1. And so we have considered all cases of what x could be, and we have shown in either case the limit of the sequence is equal to 1. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.